Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name's Damon and we are here today to talk about Necromunda, but this time we're talking about the Ash Wastes, of course. So I've been holding off for a little while with Ash Wastes content, um, just because I wanted to feel ready um, to actually um, drop some knowledge, um, because prior to this I hadn't actually read into it too much. I have now read this book cover to cover, um, and I'm pretty happy with um, how things are looking. I've also played some games now as well with vehicle rules and stuff too. So I'm kind of happy with the mechanics. I've got a basic understanding of how things work. I'm sure many of you have played um, full campaigns already with the Ash Waste rules and that's great. Um, so if I do get anything wrong here, please do um, comment down below. Um, but in this episode of Sump Banter, I've decided to focus on um, custom vehicles and custom vehicles only, and all the different upgrades and war gear that you can get for your custom vehicles. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because um, in a week or two, we're actually going into our new campaign here, or our next campaign in, in Wellington, um, and we're hybridizing the, um, the sort of Ash Wastes rules. So we're not necessarily having a campaign of just Ash Waste stuff. It's still going to be regular Necromunda, but some of those games will be played in the Wastes, and every gang will, will have um, access to some vehicles as well, some custom vehicles. Um, so um, without further ado, let's look into the, um, the book of the Outlands um, and have a look at some of the custom vehicle options that you can do um, in this Mad Max supplement that we've got here. So, Book of the Outlands, um, fantastic book for so many reasons. It's got squats in it, it's got Ash Waste Nomads in it, it's got all sorts of stuff in it. It's really good value actually compared to a lot of the other Necromunda books. This one and Book of the Outcast I think are essential arbitrator tools, um, so do pick those up. Um, but without further ado, we're going to be talking about um, creating your own custom vehicles. Now, the options really here are pretty limitless. Um, it's really exciting, actually. I've, you know, I've never really been a huge vehicle fan in general. In real life, I don't drive, um, but I've always been a fan of Mad Max and stuff. And this is just straight out of that world, I suppose. Um, and the Ash Wastes, you know, they used to be a thing, but I was kind of not really playing Necromunda um, when Ash Wastes were, was kind of a coming into it. I'd actually stopped playing at that point and um, discovered drugs and girls, I think. So, um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, that's just the truth of it. But um, I did play lots of old Necromunda. Um, so this, the vehicle element side of things is kind of a little bit newish to me, I suppose. I did play a bit of Gorkamorka, and I suppose this is a little bit like that. Um, however... Minus the orcs, of course, which is great because I hate orcs. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's talk about the different vehicle types you can get here. So, um, if you are to play an Ash Waste campaign, or at least a campaign that involves vehicles, um, you're going to get 400 credits extra to spend on vehicles and crew, um, and upgrades and war gear and stuff like that. So, um, you're going to have 1,400 credits generally when you're starting a gang, gang so you can spend some of that um, you know, that, that initial 1,000 towards vehicles as well if you want to, I believe. Um, but in our new campaign coming up, we've pretty much spent 1,000 on our gang as normal. And then we've got 400 left over for vehicles um, and stuff. So there you go. Um, so I'm kind of looking at this as what can I buy custom vehicle wise for 400 credits, basically. Um, anyway, there are three steps to creating your own vehicle here. Uh, the first step is to choose a basic vehicle template. So there are four different vehicle templates in this. There are light vehicles, which are, you know, obviously lighter, armoured, faster and more um, manoeuvrable. Two medium and heavy vehicles. Heavy vehicles are, of course, much slower, harder to handle because, um, you know, they're bigger and heavier, but they've also got a lot more durability and are harder, harder, much harder to hurt. Um, you've also then got your sort of odd one, which is your walker type. Now, walkers are a little bit different from light, medium, and heavy. Um, you know, they have a different type of locomotion, um, and they are generally the best at handling. So you can turn lots with um, walkers, um, and they're far better at handling um, in general, but they aren't as tough, and they don't have as many weapons as, say, your heavy vehicles and stuff. So there you go. So four different vehicle types there. The next step, after you've selected your main vehicle type, is to select some vehicle upgrades. So depending on how much your um, basic vehicle cost is, you're gonna have a certain amount of credits left over for vehicle upgrades. Um, there is a, a sort of house list of vehicle upgrades and war gear that you can buy your vehicles on creation. After that, it's really going to the trading post to get those um, extra bits and bobs that you want throughout your campaign. 
The next step is to purchase war gear as well, which is exactly the same as what I just said. Um, war gear and upgrades are two separate things. So upgrades are limited to the amount of upgrades you can actually have on the type of vehicle. So a heavy vehicle can have more upgrades than a light vehicle, for example. Also more weapons too. But the amount of war gear that you can have is fairly limitless. It's um, you know similar to grenades and stuff like that. However, you can only have one type of that particular war gear on a vehicle. Um, so now you know that stuff, <clears throat> um, we're going to go into the actual specifics of light, medium, heavy and walker vehicles here and just tell you the sort of basic costs and stats and what you can really do with them uh, in the Ash Wastes um, campaigns here. So for a light vehicle, again this is the speediest, um, least tough, least durable but um, best handling um, vehicle here. This is only 50 credits. So 50 credits is not a lot, it's the same price as a ganger in most houses. Um, and they're pretty cool. Um, so with your vehicle, you've got movement seven for a light light vehicle, which is the fastest. Um, it's almost as fast as a motorbike. The bikes are eight. Um, but your toughness on the front side and rear is only three. So it's the same toughness as your average ganger. It's um, easily woundable by bolters, things like that on threes. Um, it's quite easy to, to get by um, a toughness three vehicle generally. Um, you then got your hull points. Now hull points stats, if you don't know, uh, hull points is basically wounds. It's how much damage your, your vehicle can take before it's wrecked pretty much. Um, the next stat is handling um, HND. Uh, in this case on a light vehicle it's a 6 plus, so it has better handling than the medium or the heavy vehicle, but not quite as good as the walker as you'll see. The next stat is its save, so we have a 5 plus save on a light vehicle, which is basically equivalent to mesh armor there. Um, and then you have your crew characteristics. So we'll talk about crew in a little in a little while because there are different options you can take with crew um, depending on what gang you are and depending on how much um, credits or how many credits you've got left um, left over for your crew. But you do need crew to drive a vehicle, so you can't um, avoid that cost, I'm afraid. Um, the next special rules we've got, and these this special rule is is um, throughout all of the custom vehicles, all the different types of custom custom vehicles you can get, and that's jury rigged. Now, what jury rigged means is that the cost of um, the cost of repairs is double. So, for a custom vehicle, if you were to buy a Wolf Quad or a Ridge Runner or something that isn't a custom vehicle. Um, that's going to be a lot cheaper to sort of um, maintain and fix. However, with your custom vehicles, even though you can do a far load more with them and the options are pretty limitless, um, it does cost you a bit more to, um, you know, to, to keep, them, keep them on track, um, pun intended. Um, <clears throat> you've also got weapon hard points here as well. So your light vehicle, this is, this is basically the weapon mounted on the vehicle itself. Um, your weapon hard point on a light vehicle is only one, so you can only have one weapon hard point on that vehicle. Of course you can upgrade to different weapon types and different other things associated to that weapon hard point, but um, a light vehicle only gets one. The next thing of course, and this is again universal on the, the light, medium and heavy vehicle here, is the type of locomotion. So you can actually choose whether your vehicle is by default a wheeled vehicle, um, so like a car or a buggy or something, or you can be a tracked vehicle. Now we're going to talk about what tracked and wheeled and skimmer and walker all do. There are four types of locomotion in the game, but your default light, medium and heavy vehicle comes wheeled. You can change it to tracked for no cost. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you about what that does in a bit. So there you go. In terms of upgrades, um, now, like I said, I think I mentioned already, your light, your medium, your heavy and your walker all have certain um, slots or certain uh, maximum um, amounts that you can give upgrades to on different parts of the vehicle. So for a light vehicle here, on the body, you can only give it one upgrade. So a maximum of one upgrade on the body, a maximum of two upgrades on the drive system, and a maximum of two upgrades on the engine. So one, two, two for the light vehicle. So uh, there you go. And one um, weapon hard point there as well. Um, <coughs> By the way, um, someone someone put in the comments of my last video that um, take a take a um, take a shot for every time I say there you go. Um, so I'm consciously trying not to say there you go, but I've just said there you go. So there you go. Um, that's a lot of shots anyway. Um, I found it kind of funny. You don't know your own sort of eccentricities until you actually get them called out, I suppose. But there you go. <laughs> I did it again. Fuck. Um, anyway, <clears throat> moving on. That was your light vehicle. Very very affordable. 
not very tough, but quite fast, maneuverable, quite, quite fun to use. Um, just remember that that 50 credits um, is not including the fact that you do need a crew member, so that's either going to be 20 credits or 40 credits, generally, depending on how good you want your crew member to be, um, and also your upgrades and stuff too. So you're looking at, it's probably going to end up being well over 100 to, to 200 credits for a, um, a decent enough light vehicle there. Um, so there you go. Fuck! <laughs> anyway, medium vehicle is the next one up. This is 130 credits, so it goes from 50 credits to 130 credits, which is quite an increase. However, you'll see why. Um, now the movement comes down to six, so we've gone from movement seven to movement six, so it's slightly um, less speedy than a light vehicle. However, the toughness on the front side and rear goes from three to five, so suddenly we have something that's much, much, much tougher. And, um, and this is without any upgrades too. So your medium vehicle is, is definitely tougher than a, a mortal shell, um, which your light vehicle is, is kind of like a human really in lots of ways. Um, and your hull points go from, uh, what was it, one I think, to three now as well. So you've got three hull points, makes them far more durable. So that extra, what is it, 80 credits, or something like 50, 60, 70, yeah, 80 credits um, extra is definitely um, reflected in the stats here as well. Your handling, goes from a six up to a seven up so it's still average um you know there's not a huge amount between a six up and a seven up but it's still you know it's it's less good at handling so that is a problem and um, depends how many um sort of crazy maneuvers and turns you want to do with with a medium vehicle but it's doable um, a seven up is average um, and then we have a save of a four plus so similar instead of sort of mesh armor equivalent i suppose um you you could look at like carapace armor being the sort of armor type on this one um, so again it's jury rigged, again it has locomotion so you can choose to be tracked instead of wheeled um, from the off and it has one weapon hard point as well. So your medium vehicle actually has the same amount of weapon hard points as your light vehicle. Um, that's just what it is. In terms of the upgrade slots, uh, we've got on the body we've got two, um, on the drive we've got two and on the engine we've got, got three. So. The same amount of slots on the drive as the light vehicle, however, one more on the body and the engine. I'm not going to say there you go. <laughs> the last vehicle type we have here, or the last regular vehicle type we have here, um, is your heavy vehicle. And this is 175 credits. Um, your heavy vehicle is something quite large, really, um, in the game. So it's, it's like a tank, pretty much. Um, and that, again, that's ref reflected in the stats here as well. So goes from medium vehicle being 130 credits to heavy vehicle being 175 credits. The movement again comes down to five here, so it's considerably slower than the light vehicle. Um, however, the toughness goes from five on your medium vehicle to seven now. So your toughness is seven at the front side and rear, which is pretty good. Um, you know, las cannons and stuff are gonna get through it, but heavy bolters and other weapons are actually gonna struggle to get through the armor of this thing. Your hull points go from three to four. Um, but your handling goes up again to 8 plus now. So your handling now becomes lower than average, um, which is a problem, um, can be a problem anyway. However, there are upgrades that can fix this problem. Um, in fact, there are upgrades that can affect every single weapon, or sorry, not weapon, vehicle stat here. Um, yeah. And then your save, again, is the same as your medium vehicle with a four up, basically like carapace armor there as well. Again, it's jury rigged. Again, it's got the locomotion, so you can choose to be tracked or wheeled. Um, and your weapon hard points actually go up. So you've now got two weapon hard points, so you can have um, two big, fat, powerful weapons on it as well. Um, and in terms of the upgrade slots on the heavy vehicle, we've got four on the body, three on the drive, and two on the engine. So pretty cool there. So all in all, you've got seven, eight, nine upgrade slots um, from the off on that vehicle. So you can really, really go to town on your heavy vehicle and make it pretty customizable. In fact, you can with all of these, but... Um, yeah, and then you've got your war gear on top of that too. So lastly, just talking about this one quickly, um, is the walker type of vehicle here. So this is 70 credits for the walker. So it's um, you know a bit more expensive than your light vehicle by 20 credits. Um, and it's got similar sort of stats actually. It's much slower with the movement of five. However, it is a walker. But the toughness is the same as the light vehicle with three front side and rear. It's got two hull points instead of, I believe, one. I'm just gonna double check that. Yeah, two hull points instead of one on the light vehicle. I'm comparing it to the light vehicle because it seems seems the right thing to do. And then you've got an insanely good handling with a four plus here as well. So your handling, basically that's the thing that stands out on the walker is your handling. 
um, and it's save as a 5 up again so similar to the light vehicle there as well with your sort of mesh armor equivalent again it's jury rigged weapon hard points 1 um, and your locomotion it is a walker it can't ever be anything else it's always going to be a walker um, I'm going to talk about what the different locomotion types actually represent in the game as well um, shortly but just not quite yet um, in terms of the upgrade slots here as well we've got on the body we've got two on the drive we've got one and on the engine we've got two there as well um, so pretty cool the walker um, I really like the idea of the walker it definitely is quite different to the others as well with just such good handling but very slow um, really really cool idea um, I'm now going to start talking about the sort of equipment that you can get from the off on your custom vehicles when you're actually creating them so vehicles custom vehicles in Necromunda um, that was a little bit of a sort of um, highlight on the sort of four different base vehicle profiles that you can have. Just uh, recapping on that, we've got a light vehicle, um, which has got the highest speed, um, quite low toughness, not very durable, but um, very maneuverable, good handling. You've got your medium vehicle, which is pretty just medium across the board. You've got your heavy vehicle, which has the most upgrade slots, has the highest toughness, the highest um, hull points, but of course the slowest and least handling. And then you've got your walker, which has the best handling out of the lot. Um, and that's really what stands out on the walker there too. So in terms of the vehicle equipment or upgrades that you can actually give your vehicle on creation here, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about the ones that are actually on this page um, and not the ones at the trading post just yet. And um, we're going to move on to those in a minute and actually talk, talk through each one of them and what they do in the game. But here on creation, um, these are the things that you can have. So for the body upgrades, You've got a crash cage for 15 credits, escape hatches for 10 credits, extra armor for 25 credits, a ram for 15 credits, and a transport bed for 15 credits as well. For drive upgrades, we've then got all wheel steering for 10 credits, emergency brake for 10 credits, and um, tire claws for 10 credits as well. Uh, then for engine, engine upgrades, we have um, easy turnover, nitro burners, and smoke vents for 5, 15, and 25, respectively, as well. Um, you've then got your weapons. So we've got basic, special, and heavy weapons that you can have on your vehicle hard points. Um, the basic weapon choices that you can get out of the box are auto guns, las guns for 15 credits apiece. Um, for special weapons, we've got a long las, which is kind of strange, for 20 credits, and a grenade launcher, which I'm gonna, I, I think a lot of people are probably going to take on their vehicles generally because it's the cheapest and bestest decent weapon, I suppose. Um, and that's 65 credits, same as it is for a ganger. Um, and for your heavy weapons, uh, again, these are your sort of basic heavy weapons that you get with any sort of custom vehicle. Um, you can have a harpoon launcher for 110 credits, a heavy stubber for 130 credits, which is pretty good. Um, and, a, and a mining laser for 125 credits there as well. So similar price for your heavy stubber and your mining laser. Your heavy stubber is obviously anti-infantry mainly and your mining laser is slightly better against vehicles than it would be otherwise. So it really depends on what you want to do there. Um, but bear in mind they're pretty expensive to have those heavy weapons uh, from, from the off. Um, in terms of vehicle uh, war gear, you can have boarding ramps, uh, body spikes, flare launchers, headlights, smoke launchers, and wheel scythes, which is straight out of um, straight out of Mad Max. That one, the wheel scythes, I must say. Um, I'm not going to bother telling you what the credit costs for those are anyway. Um, and then, basically, after that point, um, during the campaign, you're going to go to the trading post for vehicle upgrades and vehicle war gear, just as you would for regular stuff in a regular gang. Um, same same thing you've still got rarity um, values you've got some common stuff and then you've got rarity up to 12 or whatever it is after that so um again i'm not going to talk about what is where and what's the rarest and whatnot but um i may as well go straight into talking about the actual upgrades and what they do exactly individually so on to the vehicle upgrades and um we're just going to talk through what each of these does in alphabetical order there are quite a few of them to get through but um, it's worth doing um, if you haven't got this book this will give you a bit of insight as to how to build your custom vehicle um, um, and what to what to do with it basically um, some of these are amazing some of these aren't um, but generally speaking none of them are particularly expensive it's really the where the high credit cost comes in is um, heavy weapons and stuff really anyway without further ado um, ablative armor is the first one. Now ablative armor, a vehicle fitted with ablative armor, treats the first non-glancing hit as a glancing hit basically. 
Um, so this is pretty cool, can stop you getting wrecked, it can save you bacon basically. It's kind of like a, a bio booster I suppose equivalent, it just can, just makes you um, slightly more survi survivable in the first instance, it's quite good. Um, that's what ablative armor does anyway. The next one is all wheel steering. So for this one it increases your handling characteristic by one, uh, which is pretty cool. But the upgrade cannot be taken by a vehicle with either skimmer or walker. Um, locomotion there. Um, so of course you're not going to want it on um, a walker anyway because a walker already has good handling but this is pretty good for um, all-wheel steering is really good for a heavy vehicle because you've got that 8 plus um, handling stat you can go from an 8 plus to a 7 plus there as well so definitely a very good one for a heavy vehicle there. Um, the next one is anti-grav generators so this is how you make the locomotion of your vehicle into a skimmer a la a um, you know, an Eldar Grav tank or something like that. Of course, you're not going to see Eldar on Necromunda, but, you know, the same sort of type of vehicle that we're talking about there. Um, pretty cool. I'm going to talk about that locomotion rule specifically. So there are now four different types of locomotion. You've got wheeled, um, tracked, uh, what's it called, skimmer and walker now. So there are four different types of locomotion. You've then got um, your Architect Automantic Reactor, which is a bit of a mouthful, that one. But a vehicle fitted with an Archaeotech Automantic Reactor increases its movement characteristic by two. When the vehicle is wrecked, the reactor explodes. All models within three inches suffer a strength five, AP minus one, damage one hit, um, and the vehicle is then removed. So, uh, but yeah, increasing your movement by two is pretty cool at the cost of something that does explode. Um, so you could technically drive this vehicle into the fray and just hope that it explodes and takes all your enemies out with it. So <laughs> quite a good um, sort of suicide kamikaze vehicle there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. The next one is a crash cage. This is pretty cool. So a vehicle fitted with a crash cage treats the, non, the first non-glancing hit it suffers to the crew location in each battle as a glancing hit. So it's a bit more, you know, a bit safer for your crew um, selection there. It does keep them alive a bit easier. Um, the next one is easy turnover. Um, so a vehicle fitted with an easy turnover applies a plus one modifier modifier to any checks to restart its engine. Um, so if you yeah if you if your vehicle stops, then you get a plus one to that roll. You then got emergency brake is the next one. So whenever this vehicle moves due to a failed loss of control test, halve the distance travelled. Um, this upgrade cannot be taken by a walker. Um, interesting one that one. Um, it's quite cool. It just means that if you do go out of control you're going half the distance that you normally would so that can really affect things especially if you've got lots of scenery around you and you're going to smash into something. Um, it's quite good. <coughs> you've next, you've next you've got the engine shell. Uh, a vehicle fitted with an engine shell treats the first non-glancing hit suffered to the engine location each battle as a glancing hit. So um, similar again to the ablative armor there, but this is for the um, for the engine there. Um, so that's pretty cool. The next one is escape hatches. So when rolling on the lasting injury table for the crew of a vehicle fitted with escape hatches, the result may be re-rolled. The second one must stand though. So um, quite cool. It just means that your um, your crew could actually scramble out of the vehicle before it explodes and stuff. So quite a nice fluffy one there. You've then got the explosive ram. This is quite cool, so a bit different to a normal ram. This one actually explodes. So the first head-on collision this vehicle has in a game, um, so the other object also suffers a strength 5 AP minus 2 damage to hit in addition to any other effect. So that's pretty cool. So you actually work that out alongside the, um, the ramming maneuver by itself there as well. Um, the next one is extra armor. It just increases the um, toughness on the front side and rear by one. So I actually have this on my Razorback for my Inquisition Warband. And of course, I've got a very, very, very highly durable, very slow um, APC, basically. Um, and the extra armor means that I go um, to toughness eight all around, which is pretty lovely. Uh, the next one is Gas Promethium Engine. So each time this vehicle moves, any model within one of the vehicle at any point during its movement suffer a strength three AP minus one damage one hit with the blaze trait from the flames belching out the exhausts. Really cool. Most definitely suits a, um, a corridor vehicle, <laughs> that's for sure. Really, really cool. I like that one a lot. Um, so you could just screech in front of somebody uh, and then try and try and blaze them all. Uh, you've then got a gliss injector. Um, once per battle, when it's activated, a vehicle fitted with a gliss injector can increase its movement characteristic by four for the duration of the activation. And there is no downside to that. So it's just a once per battle, 
um, increase your movement by four. Pretty cool. Um, you then got the nitro burner. Now this is available from creation, and this basically adds to, adds one to your movement through throughout. So again, really good for heavy vehicles because you've got such a slow moving vehicle, especially if it's tracked like mine is. It's movement four, so this actually makes it up to movement five. So um, definitely worth having on a heavy vehicle. Um, but if you want a super super speedy vehicle, you can do that too on a light vehicle, um, and suddenly you're the same speed as a, a motorbike. So that's pretty cool. Plasma coil engine here. Uh, when this vehicle is activated, its movement characteristic can be increased by two inches. However, if it is, then after the activation is failed, uh, sorry, after the activation is finished, roll a d6. On the result of a one, the engine overheats and the vehicle overheats and the vehicle loses one HP. So um, yeah, not not particularly nice, but pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. You, it's kind of like a um, stim slug stash for a vehicle, basically. Um, it doesn't increase your toughness or anything, though, unfortunately. Next one is pneumatic radials, uh, radials. Sorry, a vehicle fitted with pneumatic radials does not suffer any penalty to its movement for traversing difficult terrain. This upgrade can only be taken by a vehicle with the wheeled locomotion rule. So, we'll talk about tracked in a minute. But if you've got a tracked vehicle, that's what that does. Um, but you can add that to a wheeled vehicle just to make it um, better over um, difficult terrain. Powered steering next. Um, so when performing a move simple action, this vehicle may take two turns of up to 90 degrees at any point before or during after its movement, rather than the usual one. Um, so the upgrade cannot be taken by a vehicle with either the skimmer or walker special rule. Pretty cool um, for a vehicle that's got good handling. Uh, not so cool for a vehicle that hasn't got good handling. The next one is your ram. So this is, again, this is something you're gonna take from creation. Most vehicles will probably take a ram, I think, just because they're quite cheap. Um, but a vehicle fitted with a ram adds plus one strength, AP, and damage um, when you're ramming stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, only on the front arc, though, of course. Um, you then have a redundant drive system. So a vehicle fitted with a redundant drive system treats the first non-glancing hit it suffers to the drive location in each battle as a glancing hit. This upgrade cannot be taken uh, by a walker. So similar to the ablative armor and stuff and the engine shell, however, this one is to the drive system specifically. Um, so pretty good again there. Uh, the next one is reinforced armor. So this one gives you um, gives your vehicle one extra HP, uh, one extra hull point. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm not sure how much that one costs, but yeah, it's pretty good. One, one extra hull point is excellent. Um, you then have your rock grinder um, ram, which comes on your rock grinder, of course. Um, a vehicle fitted with a rock, rock grinder ram adds two to the strength, AP, and damage of any vehicle impact from its front arc. So similar to a normal ram, but just one better. Um, pretty awesome, that one. Uh, smoke vents. I have this on my Razorback as well. A vehicle is constantly shrouded by clouds of smoke. All ranged attacks targeting it suffer minus one to hit. So it's a little bit like evade, the evade skill, but on a vehicle. Um, but yeah, this effect is ignored by anything that ignores the smoke weapon trait. So your, your vehicle is basically always obscured by a cloud of um, black smoke, which is pretty cool. Um, the next one is speed fins. So speed fins, of course, uh, increase your... Um, sorry, if you don't make any turns during your activation, you can increase your movement um, by one. Um, and it can't be taken by a walker, that one either. Tire claws next. Um, a vehicle fitted with tire claws increases its handling characteristic by one. The upgrade cannot be taken by a vehicle with the wheeled location. Oh, sorry, can only be taken by wheeled. Um, generally speaking, you've got more upgrades available for wheeled stuff than you have for non-wheeled stuff, I'd say. Um, the next one is a transport bed. So a defined area, which must be clear on the model, of a vehicle fitted with a transport bed. This means that the fighters in the area do not have to check to see if they fall off and the vehicle moves. So this is essential if you actually want people riding in the top of it, um, because it means you don't have to make those initiative checks every time you move um, and fall off it. Pretty cool. However, of course, you're going to want guys with small bases or a vehicle that's actually got a really big um, area that they can all stand on. Um, so there you go. I've said it again, apologies. <laughs> um, we then have the transport cage. So this is pretty cool. Um, transport cage is basically what I'm gonna have on my APC. So this is where guys can actually fit inside it. Um, there's actually an awful lot to talk about here. I'm not gonna talk about the, all the rules, but the main, the main thing that you can do is you can embark or disembark. So um, how many fighters can you fit in this thing? Can't remember, let's just have a look. I think it's, oh yeah, so 
on a small um, transport cage, it's three fighters and a large one, it's six fighters. So you can get quite a, quite a few guys with the large one, but they're a bit more expensive. Um, but you have two basic actions that you can do with your transport cage. You've got embark and disembark. Um, if you want to embark, if this fighter is within one, inches, one inch of a transport cage's access point, remove them from the battlefield. They're now embarked in the transport cage. Um, and again, disembark. If the fighter is embarked in a transport cage, place them within one inch of the transport cage's access point and at least one inch away from any enemy fighters. This may mean that you can't disembark if someone runs up and um, stands in front of the back of your vehicle. Um, so just bear that in mind. Someone can be cheeky like that. Pretty cool though, so you can actually carry, if you've got a really hard, uh, you know, hard hitting heavy vehicle, um, you know, that's going to take a lot of hits before it gets taken out and you just want to and you've got some vulnerable fighters you can transport them across the battlefield like a rhino or whatever it's a pretty cool thing to do um, and then just toss them out and into the fray uh, we then have turtle back so this one's quite cool and fluffy so a vehicle with a turtle back does not automatically become wrecked if it rolls due to failing a loss of control test instead it loses two hole points and an auto writes itself of course that's not going to work very well on a light vehicle because they don't have two hole points to spare but on a heavy vehicle you could totally do that um, and it might save your bacon um, you've then got weapon hard points of course which you know what they are anyway but you can pay for an extra weapon hard point if you wish um, however this upgrade can only be can sorry adds one weapon hard point um, this upgrade can be taken multiple times so there you go i said it again really trying not to you then have a weapon stash as well. This vehicle counts as an ammo cache. So the whole vehicle is a giant ammo cache. Pretty cool um, for modeling stuff there as well. Um, and the next thing we're going to talk about is the vehicle war gear we can go into now. So those were all your vehicle upgrades. Um, I think I went through absolutely everything there, at least in the book. I'm sure there will be more to come in other books shortly. But that's it for now. It's quite a lot to talk through, isn't it? Um, the next thing, of course, is we're going to talk about um, war gear. Now, the difference between vehicle war gear and vehicle upgrades is obviously your upgrades are limited to um, the amount of upgrade slots you have on that vehicle. Talking about war gear, though, you can have as much of this as you like. However, you can only have, um, you know, one of that piece of war gear uh, per vehicle there. Um, there aren't as many to talk through here, but there's still some pretty cool ones. Um, the first one is your boarding ramp. So this um, is like uh, a big ramp that you just put down onto another vehicle and jump across. Um, a fighter attempting to jump from a vehicle uh, within three inches adds one to its initiative check, so that's quite nice, um, particularly for fighters with low initiative. Um, squats aren't going to do many boarding actions, are they? <laughs> but be quite a cool idea. Um, you then have body spikes, so anytime a fighter moves onto a vehicle fitted with body spikes, um, they must make an initiative test. If failed, they suffer an automatic strength three damage one hit, so that's quite cool as well. Um, this attack does not pin them though. Um, booby trapped fuel tanks. Um, these are all really fun, all the war gear is really fun. If a vehicle fitted with booby trapped fuel tanks is wrecked, roll a d6 every time a fighter moves within three inches of it. On a five plus, the vehicle explodes. And it's a, it's a um, fight within five inches. It's a strength six, AP minus one damage one hit with the blaze trait. Um, once it's exploded, a vehicle equipped with a booby track is removed from the battlefield and must then roll on the lasting injury um, table there. Caltrop launcher. Caltrops are pretty cool. That's what, um, you know, it pops your pops your tyres, basically, uh, what police vehicles do. So you can, uh, for a basic action, you can lay caltrops. A vehicle moves forwards uh, in a straight line up to its movement characteristic. No turns may be made. At any point during this move, up to three markers can be placed on the battlefield within the vehicle's rear arc and within one inches of the vehicle. Anytime a vehicle with the wheeled special rule moves within one inches of a caltrop marker, they must make a loss of control test with a minus two modifier. So pretty awesome that one. If you can get in front of someone and lay those down, um, I really like that one. It's nice and fluffy, but of course my big tracked um, Razorback is not going not gonna to struggle with those. However, I'm never catching up with anybody because I'm super slow. Um, the next one is flare launchers, so you get to um, launch your flares as a basic activation there as well. Uh, and basically, everyone within 12 inches of this vehicle gains the revealed condition um, until the start of the end phase, which is which is really cool if, if people, are, people are hiding um, and stuff. So, very good. Uh, we then have headlights. So, uh, headlights, I think I've got these on my Razorback as well. Um, 
but yeah, um, a vehicle fitted with headlights can turn them on or off at the start of their activation. They remain in the selected state until the next activation, but while they're on, all middle mall models within 12 inches in a line of sight of the vehicle, front arc, um, are revealed. In addition, when the headlights are on, the vehicle equipped with them is also revealed as well, so it makes you revealed if you're playing in the dark. Um, you then have kill switch. Kill switch, uh, if the vehicle is wrecked as a result of a hit, do the engine subtract one from the lasting dam damage table roll? Um, that's pretty cool for longevity, I suppose. The next one is mine layer. So similar to your flare launchers and your caltrop launcher, you can lay mines for a basic. So the vehicle moves forward in a straight line. Same, the same as laying the caltrop actually. At any point during its move, a melt trap may, must be placed, maybe placed on the battlefield within the vehicle's rear arc and within one inch of the vehicle. It cannot be triggered until after it's completed, after this is completed. And we then have smoke launchers as well, which are really cool. I'm definitely going to have these on my Razorback as well. Um, but yeah, again, a basic action to do so, and you place three smoke markers uh, within two inches of this vehicle, um, which act like smoke grenades as well. So pretty cool, especially if you have the smoke vents as well. Uh, just I'm just going to have a smoky, hard-to-hit vehicle. Um, we then have wheel scythes, which is the last piece of war gear here. Very, very Mad Max, this one. So if a vehicle fitted with wheel scythes moves within one inches of a model, that model takes a strength three AP damage one hit. Sorry, AP, no AP. Um, if they're a fighter, they are pinned. This war gear can only be taken by vehicles with the wheeled special rule. So again, another thing which is exclusively just for wheeled um, vehicles there. So so that was, that was all of the um, vehicle upgrades there. Uh, for creating your own vehicle and also all of the war gear for your vehicles there too Whew, it's quite exhausting talking about all of that stuff but yeah loads and loads of stuff you can do as you can see um, you can make your vehicles faster tougher you can make them better at handling you can make them do all sorts of extra shenanigans you can shroud them in smoke you can lay cow traps and mines um, you can have boarding ramps, transport cages, all sorts. It's really, really cool. So the options are kind of limitless there, really. And in terms of modeling and stuff and, and actually creating your own miniatures for this, it's just super, super fun. And I've already seen some awesome stuff happening out there in the community. A couple more things to talk about quickly. So firstly, I just want to touch on locomotion. So again, um, like I mentioned earlier, we've got four different types of locomotion. Your wheeled is your most standard type of locomotion. So most vehicles are generally going to have wheels. Um, if they're wheeled, of course, um, they um, treat rough terrain as um, for every one inch that you move, um, it counts as two inches. So similar to a fighter in on you know in a normal Necromunda climbing over little obstacles and stuff. Um, same for your vehicle. Uh, same for your walker. Um, so your walker has has trouble with um, you know difficult terrain as well. However, your walker's got a special rule here as well. Not only have they got extra better handling, but um, they can also make um, highly maneuverable, but like the speed of other forms of locomotion, a walker may make as many turns during their activation as they wish. Um, so that's pretty cool. So you can turn loads, um, and they've got really good handling too. So you're not really having to worry about that. So for shooting weapons and stuff the walker is kind of the best for that because if you've got um, a weapon arc of course you can turn to face um, your enemies wherever you like quite often so that's your wheeled and your walker the next one is um, tracked of course now a tracked vehicle you can do this to any vehicle on creation from wheeled to tracked it costs you no extra to do so now what tracked does um, is it means that you're automatically one movement slower which is a bit of a nerf however it does mean that you can traverse um, difficult terrain as normal so you can just go roll straight over it um, cow traps don't affect you either so that's pretty cool um, but yeah there you go that's really all the tract does um, and then we have skimmers as well so skimmers again we have to purchase that vehicle upgrade i can't remember what it's called but so the anti-grav one um, which makes you basically a flyer um, now skimmers, um, skimmers ignore all difficult terrain except uh, and dangerous terrain when moving. However, if it ends its activation on difficult terrain or dangerous terrain, a vehicle with the skimmer locomotion rule must take a handling check. If you fail that, um, it's pretty bad actually. You suffer an immediate catastrophic hit to your drive. So pretty nasty. So you can traverse it, just don't stop on it basically. So those are your four different locomotion types there. The next thing I just want to touch on quickly is weapon hard points, which I haven't, I didn't actually um, talk about too much, but when you buy a weapon hard point, 
Firstly, you have to choose two things, whether it is operated by a crew member or whether it's operated by um, a passenger. Um, so you have, to, you have to choose that on creation, whether you're actually gonna have one of your gang members controlling that weapon or if you're gonna buy crew specifically for that weapon hardpoint. The next thing, of course, is arcs or firing arcs. Now, when you buy a weapon for a weapon hardpoint, again, you have to choose which arc it has, whether it's the front, the rear, the left, or the right. Of course, if you're buying it for a walker, like I just mentioned, you can turn and face your direction of choosing a lot more easily. However, for something that has lower handling, turning can be a little bit more um, sketchy. So um, just think about that. You might want to buy extra arcs. Um, now you can buy extra hard points of course, so you can have a weapon facing in the front arc, a weapon facing in the rear arc for example, um, but you can also buy different arcs of firing as well, so you can make that weapon shoot uh, in a 360 if you really must as well. So, But by default, <coughs> weapons um, and weapon hard points do start with just that one firing arc, and um, just remember do you want your fighters in your gang to be operating that and sacrificing the other stuff they can do um, sometimes? Or do you want a designated crew for that as well? Um, now we're not going to talk about crew particularly here, but just off the top of my head, you have your regular sort of scum racer crew and you have your Guild of Coin Haulia available to everybody on creation. Um, now it's double the price for your Guild of Coin Haulia. I'm doing this off the top of my head here. They're 40 credits, your Scummer is 20 credits. Now the difference, um, there is no difference in ballistic skill, so really what you're paying for is those mental stats. You're paying for extra cool, extra willpower, intelligence, and what's the other one? Leadership, I suppose, which is something you're never really gonna use anyway, but Again, whatever fits the fluff. Um, generally speaking, the Scum Racer is, is great for 20 credits, but they do have um, you know, the mental stats of a Hive Scummer, so not particularly good um, Not particularly good when it comes to making those bottle rolls and psychological rolls in general. The Guild of Corn Hoylia. Guild of Coin Hoylia is much better at um, sticking around and stuff as well with slightly higher cool and willpower, etc. So really that's that. Um, I think I've discussed everything I can when it comes to custom vehicles for Necromunda and for the Ash Wastes. I hope that gives you some ideas about what you can do in terms of modelling. If you haven't got this book and you haven't got the Ash Wastes box set, I haven't got that either. If you haven't got this book and you're not really sure about what to buy and you're, you're about to get into a campaign, um, hopefully this video gives you some ideas about what you can do on creation so you can go out there go to games workshop or wherever else any any other third party uh, miniature maker and buy a vehicle and start actually building it for for a campaign and now that you have a little bit of knowledge about what you can do and what you can't do um, <clears throat> and that's really that um, you've got some other things that i didn't discuss which is of course weapon upgrades there are more weapons that you can take heavy bolters etc um, on vehicles too, but there aren't that many. It is quite restrictive um, You can't just have any weapon in the game on your vehicle. However, you can have you know um, your own crew members standing on uh, a cage on the top of your vehicle shooting those weapons so bear that in mind too um, but yeah, I've 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 got a uh, in this new com upcoming campaign I didn't want to have lots of vehicles. I want to be the gang that has the most souped up single vehicle so I'm going with a, a Razorback, which is a heavy vehicle template here. Um, I think I'm taking Nitro, so I can be a bit faster, but I'm tracked as well, so it negates the fact of the being tracked. I will be taking Guild of Coin um, drivers, because they're just, you know, I'm, I'm, it's a bunch of Inquisitors, they're going to want the best drivers out there. And I think in terms of weapons and whatnot, I think I might have a grenade launcher, and that's about it for now. Um, and I'll be saving up for those heavy bolters on the top there as well at some point later. But um, in terms of the upgrades, I'm just going to be taking loads and loads of armor stuff and a, and a transport cage if the arbitrators let me. Um, so that's that, basically. Um, I think that's covered everything. Again, please um, do comment if I've missed anything, or if I've, I've skimmed over stuff too, too vaguely there. I'll probably do more of these videos when I've had a little bit more vehicle and ash wastes gameplay i've had a little bit but not that much i'm sure many of you have had a little bit more than i have um, but we're going into the new campaign soon and there'll be plenty of opportunity to give you some um, battle reports with with these games as well so i'm really looking forward to that um, but yeah please like share subscribe 
um, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.